We all know cities like New York and Tokyo, but do we ever wonder about the climate? Do you ever consider that New York is cold and rainy while Tokyo is warm and cloudy? There's climate classifications for all sorts of different climates. Despite their differences, New York and Tokyo have the same climate. But is this a coincidence? I don't think so. One quarter of the planet's population lives in the humid subtropical climate zone, which is where both New York City and Tokyo are. 65% of that 2 billion people live in the Asian part, spread across India, China, Bangladesh, and Japan. Humid subtropical climate types are typically marked by deciduous forests, and they're pretty humid normally. We can't forget the cities that are in this zone. It's not just New York and Tokyo. There's also Houston, Milan, Sao Paulo, Buenos Aires, Lusaka, Delhi, Shanghai, Hong Kong, and Brisbane, among others. And here's something interesting. Both Georgias have large portions in the humid subtropical climate zone. Next up, we have the humid continental climate type. This is basically just a cooler version of the humid subtropical climate zone. It also has the distinction of only being in the northern hemisphere, and it's spread across the three continents of North America, Europe, and Asia. There's a mix of deciduous and coniferous trees in the humid continental climate type, but overall there is a bit more coniferous. Now, cities include Calgary, Chicago, Toronto, Stockholm, Berlin, Moscow, and Vladivostok. We're going to keep cooling down and go to subarctic climates. This is also exclusively in the Northern Hemisphere. And it's also important to mention that anything north of this, as well as Antarctica, is a true Arctic climate. But we're not talking about them because they don't have cities. You probably already know what they look like too. Subarctic zones are almost always entirely coniferous, and they're often at the base of large and chilly mountains. Some cities include Anchorage, Reykjavik, Tampere, Murmansk, Krasnoyarsk, and Irkutsk. At this point, we've reached the coolest climate types. So now it's time to turn up the heat. Next we look at semi-arid zones, which are dotted all across the earth. They're generally marked by short grasslands and they don't receive much precipitation. They also often act as a buffer between deserts and other climate zones that I've already talked about. Some cities include Denver, Monterey, La Paz, Madrid, Niemi, Ahmedabad, Tehran, Gaborone, and Adelaide. But we can get even hotter than this. It's time to turn the temperature to maximum. Because now we're looking at true deserts. And by true deserts, I mean the warm deserts, the one that don't have plant life and are covered in sand. Not the Antarctican or Greenland deserts. Cities in the desert climate zone include Phoenix, Lima, Khartoum, Cairo, Dubai, Kabul, Karachi, Urumqi, and Alice Springs. We're keeping the heat at maximum, but we're adding humidity to it. And no, this is not the recipe for the average summer day in the south. Instead, this is the recipe for the jungle where the lion does not sleep tonight. Lions don't live in the jungle. Most of the tropical rainforest region, also the jungle, is located around the equator. It's marked by dense forest with lots of rainfall. Doesn't look like this, but gives you some perspective. Some cities include Cancun, Bogota, Manaus, Rio de Janeiro, Lagos, Kinshasa, Mumbai, Dhaka, Bangkok, Manila, and Jakarta. Some of you might have noticed at this point that I haven't talked about anything British yet, but now it's time to talk about the British. It's here is for the humid oceanic climate. This climate zone is where the British Isles are located in. It's usually characterized by scattered forests, lush grasslands, and scattered hills. Some cities include Vancouver, Mexico City, Quito, London, Paris, Frankfurt, Addis Ababa, Johannesburg, Kunming, Melbourne, and Auckland. And on that note, we're done. I could go into every subclimate zone, but I'm not going to. We don't have time. Welcome to the end of the video. It's now time for you to subscribe if you haven't, because that's a good thing. Oh, you should also watch this video. That's another good thing. You should do good things, like subscribe and watch that video. Thank you.